Hey guys, I'm here with former UFC lightweight Sam Stout. It's been a while. How you doing? Good. How are you? Uh, living life during COVID, it's the best we can do, right? I hear you. I got uh, a pregnant wife, a six-year-old, and a and a puppy in the house, so I'm staying busy. But I, I feel uh, you there. I got, I got definitely four. not normal life. <laughs> Perfect. So what if what besides the gym? What's been keeping you busy over since the retirement? Well. I, I mean, the gym's been keeping me busy, not for, not for the last couple months, but yeah. Uh, um, like I said, um, family, really. You know, I've just kind of reached a point in my life where, you know, I have a, I, like I said, I have a six-year-old daughter, uh, married, my wife's pregnant, having uh, my first boy, probably wow. in uh, in July. We're we're due in July. Just got a new uh, little puppy, little uh, miniature bull terrier that I love. It's just kind of more chilled out life. And then obviously the gym's kind of my source of income and, and kind of my passion outside of my family life. Absolutely. So you were one of the original like lightweights, one of the guys that were there putting on a show. I was actually the very first lightweight uh, to fight back in the UFC when they brought back the division. My, I was the first and Hominick was the second. Was that Spencer Fisher? The first Spencer Fisher fight, yeah. So that was uh, they had gotten rid of the division for a couple yeah. for a while, and then I was the first, the, the very first lightweight fight back. That's crazy. That's awesome. Like that was that would have been like after the Uno versus Penn for the championship around. Yeah, that they got, awesome. yeah, they got rid of it at that time. They were kind of considering um, Eve Edwards the uncrowned champ at that time. Yeah, and that was when Hominick fought him. That was the second the second fight in. Uh, in the lightweight division after after bringing it back. So you were pretty shredded, and they only had – this is just a question of – they didn't have the featherweight division back then. I know you fought at welterweight. Would that be something that you would have done? I, I fought I fought one fight at welterweight, but uh, that was just kind of a random thing that happened. Me and uh, – when I fought KJ Noons, I was just kind of uh, – you know, we both – Saw each other at, uh, at the check-in station. Oh, there's my dog. Um, we saw each other in the UFC office, and we just were both kind of like, yeah, I'm about 166 right now, still got 11 pounds to go. And we were both the same weight. We're like, you want to just do this at 170 so we don't have to cut? And we're like, can we do that? And we asked, and they were like, yeah, it's cool, but it won't affect your rankings at 155. And we weren't really ranked guys in yeah. like the top 10, so we were like, whatever, let's just do it. So it saved us having to do the cut, but most, all my other fights were at 155. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And you were one of the first, like, big Canadian names that came out of Canada. Uh, what does that mean to you? Um, I mean, you know, it was the, it was the early days. I'm proud to be kind of a trailblazer for the country. I wasn't, the, you know, the first guy there was, there was a, you know, George St. Pierre was paving the way. David Loazzo was paving the way. Patrick Cote, those guys were, uh, were all there ahead of me and Mark. Um, but yeah, I still got it. I was in pretty early paving the way, at least in the lightweight division. Um, so yeah, it's something I'm proud of. It's definitely, you know, a, sure. feather, a feather in my cap when, when it comes to looking at my career as a whole. Yeah. And was the weight card, was the weight cut hard to lightweight while you're doing it? Um, I, I was a pretty natural, uh, 155 er like yeah. I'm just not wasn't tall enough for 170. I just wa I walked around in shape at about 170, so it wasn't a super super hard cut for me. Um, it wasn't fun, you know. I had to diet through my whole camp, sure. and, and the way and and the other thing I always had going for me is I'm one of those people who just sweats a lot, so it yeah. was easy for me to lose a drop a lot of water weight. Um, yeah, I there were some times where people talked about me fighting at 145 but i never yeah. even considered it it was you know i if you look back at my weigh-in pictures i had i was i didn't have, you know i'd be down yeah. to one or two percent body fat so i to me it always seemed like anytime if i'm losing it dropping another weight class i'm gonna have to lose 10 pounds of muscle which wasn't something i wanted to do oh yeah that's crazy i don't know how some of these guys nowadays even make weight like uh, diego sanchez went down to the featherweight which is unheard of i don't understand how they do it. yeah yeah uh, well, yeah, well, I mean, now he fights at 170, right? You yeah, see a lot of these guys, because he, he says he's he'd rather be able to to train. He, the, the, it's such a, a fine line between um, wanting to be the biggest you can be for your division and then and having 
but at a, at a certain point it affects your training, right? If you're cardio you know, too, right? if you're living off living off basically a starvation diet, and you have to train twice a day at a very high level against some dangerous dudes, you know, there's a lot of times that weight cut takes a lot out of you, and it, and you're not getting what you what you could out of your out of your training. Oh, he's trying to say hi there. My dog's trying to get in here. This is hey, buddy. How you doing? Oh, he's cute. <laughs> this is uh, Evander Holyfield Stout. One of his uh, litter mates bit his ear in half, so we named him Evander Holyfield. You see that? Oh, that's a, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> did you get? I, I I might have a brain fart here, but did you get your nickname? Were you a big fan of Hagler? Hagler. Oh, uh, or, or Roberto Duran. You're thinking Duran. That's it. Sorry about yeah. that. You know, I didn't come up with the nickname early in my career. I was. You know, in my kickboxing career, in my early MMA days, if you look back at my first 11 fights, nine wins were yeah. by knockout. So the name just kind of, kind of stuck. Yeah. I don't know if, I don't, you know, that once I got to the UFC, I didn't have a lot of knockouts, but those guys are, they don't make it there because they're easy to put away. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it just stuck. I, I felt, I always felt kind of bad that I didn't really live up to the name in, uh, in the UFC. I didn't have a lot of knockouts, but. I yeah. still remember the moment, though, when you knocked out Yves Edwards. It was, like, the moment that you just knocked. Like, you got that big knockout. Yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty sweet feeling. You know, especially after all the hard-fought battles that I uh, that I put in up to that point. So it was nice to go home early and unscathed for once. You beat Joe Lozon, who's a great name. Yves Edwards. Uh, you fought some of the best. Uh, is there one moment in your career that really... It sticks in your mind. Well, you just mentioned the two, the one moment that, you know, the night when I was on at my best was definitely the fight against Joe Lozon. I don't know what it was that night, but, uh, you know, I, I, I got to do the fight was in Vegas where I had done my okay. camp and was kind of my second home. So I felt really comfortable. Um, you know, I just had really had myself in the my in the right mind state. And that's what allowed me to have the best performance in my life. And, and it's like, you know, looking back now, I, I, if I could do some things differently, one of them would be to work harder at getting into that right. Yeah. Mindset. That's, that's really the hardest thing to do. Cause I mean, looking back after that fight, I was like, wow, I've never felt like that in the cage. I was just so on just, and yeah. I tried to duplicate everything in the next training camp. I tried to eat the same, start at the same time, do all the same, kind of keep the same schedule, keep everything the same. And it just wasn't there the next time, you know, I just wasn't the same. Uh, well, I still, you know, I still felt good in the next one. Physically, I was in shape, all those things. I think my next fight after that was Jeremy Stevens, yes. which was a good fight. But, you know, I just wasn't adapting mm -hmm. the same way. I just didn't feel as sharp for whatever reason. I just didn't have that. And a lot. And I think it just really comes from confidence. It, it, people don't realize that mentality is like the, the number one thing. Like you could be in crazy like for instance conor mcgregor this weekend he probably yeah. wasn't mentally there but he, he seemed like he was in the best shape of his life yeah i mean uh he i i don't know what it is it's a it maybe that he's just he's kind of that fire inside of him started yeah. to, to die down a little bit having kids having living a different uh, lifestyle but have a hundred million dollars in the bank let's be real do you really want yeah to it's hard to stay hungry right when you're always well fed yeah um I think part of it too was, you know, hit the respect for Poirier. Like, I think the trash talking, hyped up Conor McGregor is the hardest guy to beat. Not this, uh, you know, let's be friends kind yeah. of. I don't know. He did, mm -hmm. and that's and that's just it. It's just the right mind state. And nothing, you know. I I respect the guy, and and it was kind of nice to. It was nice to see it. Um. Nice to see him not be such an asshole, but. Yeah. At the same time, it wasn't as entertaining, and he and didn't come look out looking, he didn't come out looking like you know like a tiger getting let out of a cage like he usually does. Yeah, and and that being said too, like I've said to a lot of people, you don't know MMA if you don't know that Dustin Poirier is one of the best in the world. That's what it. Oh no, I you know I'm happy for Dustin. I really I love Dustin. Him and I had the same manager, so we've been yeah. you know we've known each other for for years and years. We keep in touch here and there. We both got young girls, so we. We kind of dropped the, the, the odd DM back and forth. Um, really great guy, and I'm super proud of him. And it shows what kind of grit, hard work, and determination can do for you, right? You know, he's had oh, ups and sure. downs. 
and now he just beat the biggest name in in the sports history. So he's kind of he's got to be feeling pretty good right now. On my prediction video, I actually uh, said that Dustin was going to win in that round, and I put some money down, so I was pretty happy with that. Oh, nice, nice. So, yeah, it was a pretty good payout, like three to one, three and a half, like yeah, three fifty three odds or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, I got a couple more questions, and I'll let you go. The big thing was Spencer Fisher had a, a, I guess, a dementia talk, and he was saying how it affected him. You have a lot of history with him. What are your thoughts? Yeah, on that? yeah, Spencer and I have stayed friends over the years. And I was aware of this beforehand. Okay. Now he he told me about it, and he wanted to keep it on he keep a lid on things a little bit, and uh, you know because he was still hoping the UFC would would come to his aid a little bit more. I think yeah. they, they they paid for some initial testing. They paid for uh, you know some initial treatment, got him the diagnosis, paid for his medication for a short period of time, and then just kind of said, all right. You knew the you knew the risks. Yeah, which I think is pretty is a pretty sad thing. Um, and I think, you know, Dana White is a hell of a businessman, but I think yeah. sometimes it's he, he is too business focused. And you know, the the UFC talks about how you know when you first when you first get signed to the UFC, you, they really make you feel like a family and they make you feel. Sure. But the reality is, it's they sad forget about you after a bit. It. I mean, the reality is. There, when when you really need them, when it's all over, they're not really uh, they're there for you. They're not the most supportive family members. So look at BJ uh, Penn. Exactly, you know, like and uh, once your once your contracts get your contract gets cut, that's pretty much the last you see from them. So that's a sad thing. I think you know you you hear all these talks and there's the, there's a lawsuit on behalf of the the fighters and towards or uh, against the UFC in an antitrust suit. There's a lot of things I think need to change. Um, Treat the fighters know, better. Dana said in the, in the media the other day that, um, you know, we know the risks and we, and, and it's, it's true. You, you have an idea of it, but you don't ever really think it's going to happen to you. And when we were first starting, it was before all the CTE stuff was ever, Exactly. It wasn't even real. I don't even think it was. It, it, I don't even know what year it got discovered in the NFL by, uh, you know, the movie they made that Will Smith made. That was, yeah, concussion. That I'm. Yeah. I, that movie. That watching that movie and seeing uh, and kind of learning more about it. I'm that wait definitely weighed in on my uh, on my choice to retire when I did. You know. Yeah. And, and I wouldn't say that. I'm not gonna say like I'll tell you firsthand spencer's enough brave enough to talk about it i'm i got some i have some issues maybe not to the extent he does but i went through a lot of wars in there you, you know, can fight of the nights a couple times so yeah like six seven times and and even the ones that weren't fight of the night some of those you know i got in a lot of stand-up fights where you know when i retired i had uh so i saw a stat that said 100 uh, 990 yeah. 989 significant strikes landed. It's probably pretty close to the same number of strikes landed against me, right? That's a thousand, a thousand blows to the head, and that's just in fights. That's not talking about training. That's not talking right. about the wars you're putting in the gym. Yeah. So, you know, luckily for me at this point, I, you know, I have some issues, but nothing as serious as what Spencer was talking about. Um, you know, I feel sorry for him. I, I. There's, I wish I could do more to help, but the UFC hasn't left me in a position where, yeah, at the end of my career where I can, I can reach out and help to help him. You know, sure. I think the only thing we can do is bring awareness to it and and kind of get, you know, the general public uh, a little more caught up on on what's going yeah. on with these guys and and uh, you know until the UFC has to make a change. Absolutely, yeah, it was a big news uh, for a bit there. So yeah. Uh, my, I just got two more questions for you. Uh, you were at Fight Island. I know Malcolm's fight didn't go as well as nope. thought, but um, how was your experience there? Uh, it was a very cool experience. Uh, pretty surreal, actually. You know, like with all the COVID protocols, they flew us all to Vegas, had us tested there, and then they they chartered a whole 777, like a, a large yeah. plane. They flew. It was only UFC staff um, and coaches and fighters. They had a whole plane for us, so you know 
we mm-hmm. even if you weren't sitting in first class, you were getting first class treatment. It was and all our meals were prepared for us. The That's hotel awesome. was beautiful. The the island was pretty cool. Like, you know, they get, had some cool stuff for us to do. So and and it was good for me. I had I've been out of the out of the game. Like it was nice to see. It was nice to go back and see everybody hang out with Bisping again and Uriah Faber and some of the old school guys yeah. that that I haven't seen in years. So I had a great time. Other than the fact that uh, that Malcolm lost, that was pretty disappointing. But I mean, he took that fight on very short notice. Yeah, it was a short notice fight. Yeah, and uh, you know the next one didn't go his way either, which you know he he lost to a tough opponent who just won again last week. So will he be getting another shot? Do you know? Yeah, they um he would he they offered him a fight, but I mean it's just uh it's just a such bad timing like in Can- yeah a lot of these guys i think they're forgetting that the guys that people in canada are on lockdown right now there's no For gym sure. most of those places most of the guys i've talked to in the states they're pretty much business as usual yeah right? those gyms are up they're running you know so these guys have all their training partners they're doing everything they normally do malcolm's you know what's he gonna do he's he's in toronto where it's even worse now yeah. i we offered to have him come down here but even i we're not even allowed to be in the gym. Yeah, exactly. If Health Canada were to, were to find out Malcolm and I were just the two of us, we're just in there training, sparring, doing whatever, we'd get fined for that. Yeah, it's crazy. So, you know, it's not really ideal time. So hopefully they, so we had to turn this one down, but hopefully that the fact that they offered another one means they'll give him another chance when the time's right. And he can put a full camp in that's not during a quarantine and, and, uh, you know, he's had a couple tough breaks, but he's he has he, he oh, still sure. hasn't gone in there and shown what he's capable yeah. of. So that's that's the frustrating thing. You know, it's similar to what happened with Jesse Ronson in his first couple of fights. Yeah. He had those three three he was kinda lost three fights in the UFC. All three of them were tough guys. Kevin. But it was like I was watching him going, Why isn't he pulling the trigger right now? Like I've sparred with this guy, I've I've watched all his fights coming up and he is way better than this he's just yeah. he was just a little bit shot at the moment shell shocked I, I don't know what it, exactly it was um but again not in that right mind state and not performing which wasn't allowing him to perform physically as well as he could have oh for sure mentality is huge like it's 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 you know it's probably the most important factor i think yeah um, last question. Are we, is there a possibility at all that you would come back and fight one more time in the UFC? Absolutely not. Like I was saying before, and it's like, I, I mean, if I could, I would, but at this point, I think I'd be, you know, I think I have some t- sustain some damage to my head. I mean, I went my whole career, you know, if you go back, how many times in, in old fights did the commentator say, they shouldn't have called me hands of stone. They should have called me chin of stone. And then all of a yeah. sudden, boom, I get clipped with a shot I didn't see coming by KJ Nunes. Yeah. And I was like, okay, it happens to everyone. Next fight happens again. Next fight happens again. I That, for me, it was like, whoa, 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 something, something's not the same here. Yeah. And uh, I don't think it's, you know, it's not worth making 35000 bucks. I mean, that seems like a lot of money to a lot of people, but not when you're talking yeah. about, not when you're talking about putting your your mental, your, 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 your brain at stake, right? And your diet, like people don't realize like it, it costs a lot more to get ready for a fight than people think. Oh yeah, for sure. There's a lot of investment. Like you got all your regular bills, your mortgage, your, your hydro, your heat, you got to cut, keep covered. Well, you're not, you're only yeah. getting paid on fight day. It's you, three yeah. months of preparation for it. So, I mean, you break it down. It's a you tougher really, lifestyle than. Yeah, it's a hundred percent, and uh, yeah, it's just yeah, the uh, the juice ain't worth the squeeze anymore. So, for not, sure, not you're not gonna see me making a comeback. The only time you'll see me uh, on a UFC broadcast will be in the corner. For sure, I really appreciate you having on the show though. So, and hopefully, hey, it's my pleasure, man. It's my pleasure. I don't get these requests as often anymore, so happy to do it. Uh, did you want to give a shout out to anyone before I let you go? Uh, shout out to my wife and, uh, my, and my daughter and, uh, my soon to be baby. Awesome. <laughs> oh, and my dog and my dog Vander. <laughs> you probably family first, her. man. Family first. For sure. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Take care.